There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to another Friday Reads. Um, indoors, it's raining all day today which pissed me off, but what can you do? So here I am, and I hope there's no echo in this room because there's no books. Um, I've got books I'm gonna tell you about, my current reads, which is a pretty sizable stack. I've got maybe two boxes of books to s left to put in the mail, but all the other books are gone, and about 50 books that I'm taking in my suitcase, but it's uh, it's pretty, you know, for a, for a, a non-reader or a non-book maniac, that would still maybe seem like a lot of books, but I feel a little uh, weird not having thousands of books in the apartment. I don't want to talk too much about what's stressing me out other than just to say enough to just get it out there and, and uh, maybe feel better, but I'm not going to rant about anything. Today is tax day. This afternoon I'm meeting a student friend of mine because the tax office will not deal with me because I don't speak Japanese. They only supply interpreters during tax season, and of course, I'm outside of that, and got three years of tax returns to file today. I hope I have enough money, but that's all I'm going to say about that. I'll just show you the, the kind of worksheets that I've been doing. This is all in Japanese, and I got it all figured out, I think. So I'm pretty organized, so it should just be a matter of handing the, the tax clerk the spreadsheet, them typing it in which I didn't think I would need a Japanese-speaking friend to go with me, but I do, apparently, so. And uh, find out if I get money back or how much I have to pay. I won't know all of the damage yet, but uh, next week I should know the rest, so. Uh, thank God for generous parents. If you're thinking, will Sean the Book Maniac ever grow up? The answer is no. To my credit, I saved, I think, enough. I've been setting the money aside to pay the tax. I just hate dealing with it. Even in Canada, I did hate. I hated dealing with it, and certainly in a language I don't read where I have to hold up every fucking receipt to Google Translate to find out what it's about. It was eminently put offable. And so here I am. The day of reckoning is at hand. The other thing that's been stressing me out is we have a house full of furniture, which we thought that in J Japan, they call them a recycle shop. It's basically a used furniture shop. There's lots of them around, and we bought a little bit of furniture from one a couple of years ago, and they were very friendly, and they delivered it to our house, and everything was great, and we paid a visit to them, Kenji and I, about a month ago to say, oh, we're moving, and we got all this furniture, so we hope you'll, you'll buy it. There's most of it, or some of it, and they said, Sounds good, send us photos of what you got. And so we did that last weekend, and they replied within 20 minutes to say they didn't want any of it. Bookshelves. Who? What furniture store in the world doesn't want bookshelves? They didn't want anything. The desk, bed, my expensive electric recliner leather sofa. They didn't want anything. They weren't interested in anything. My ring light. So then we were stressed, because they said, oh, but by the way, if you want to pay us, we will dispose of it for you. Well, uh, I'm not sure how much I trust that offer. Plus, thanks, but no thanks. So then I listed my bookshelves on Facebook Marketplace, and I did sell one. A delightful interaction with a young Filipino woman who I was expecting to be a man, and I was kind of nervous about a man coming over to my house. I don't usually say that, but <laughs> I was. Coming in at 11 o'clock at night, so I had Kenji help me move it because Kenji was at work, and I had a, him help me move the bookshelf down stairs to the to the front door before he left in the morning so that I, I wouldn't have to bring this man up into my apartment but um, it was this really fun young Filipino uh, woman and she uh, carried it away and she was going to get into an uber van and get it home to her put in her kitchen so that's one bookshelf sold for 40 bucks which I may have to pay toward my tax bill later today but now we're really stressed that we will actually throw away perfectly good furniture and it's probably the same in most cities, but it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a pain that you have to pay. For large furniture, you have to pay. I remember the good old days when you know, whatever it was, you just threw it on the garbage, out on the garbage day or whatever, and they'd take it away. No questions asked. But those days are gone, and I suppose there's lots of good green environmental reasons why they are. But 
I won't have to pay too much. It's just going to be a hassle. I need the leather sofa to sleep on until the very last day, and I can't really help Kenji get it out of the house, so how are we going to do that? So we're still working on everything, and in the meantime, Kenji found another recycle shop, used furniture store, to come and visit our place tomorrow, and hopefully they'll buy absolutely everything. I don't care if they give me pennies, but just get it out of my sight. So... Last week I said, oh, or was it last week I said, oh, I can kind of coast to the end, and mm, it's not quite a coast, but. Hey, well, yes, breaking news, I'm home from the tax office, and oh my god, it couldn't have gone better. After all that, you do not believe how stressed out I was about this. I've been postponing this tax uh, reckoning for months and years and years and I'm getting about a thousand dollars worth of refunds coming into my bank account next month. Kenji will look after it for me. I still have to pay my city tax. That'll probably be about a thousand dollars each for three years, about three thousand dollars. But for the national tax, I'm getting about one year of that, a thousand dollars refunded, and I have enough money saved because as I said, I've been saving the money for my taxes. I just haven't done them. But I was worried it was going to be way more than I anticipated and I was going to have to borrow more money. But in fact, all I did was procrastinate. I had budgeted and saved exactly what I needed. Yay! I, I just feel my body decompressing. I've just woken up from a glorious nap. That was a lot of worrying for nothing. It's all going to work out. Life is beautiful! Reading-wise, my reading week was subpar, I would say. Let's see, what have I got to tell you about? I have bailed on one book, finished two, and started two. So let me tell you about those. Start with The Bail. That was the queer short story collection with the great title Kiss the Scars on the Back of My Neck by Joe Oconquo. And I would read this to Lindy, and we got halfway through, and we both decided that we didn't want to continue. I read, I guess, 45%. There was one story, I believe it was the second story, called Skin, that I will never, ever forget. And all the other stories were bad or not very good. So we decided not to continue. But the story called Skin, I think I talked about it last week. The one story, Skin, uh, really left a, a strong impression on me. I already have forgotten absolutely everything else I read, but some of them were just completely awful. So I need a lot more nuance in my short stories, thank you very much, and there wasn't very much in this. I can't believe it that so far, I'm quite shocked and a little bit uh, a little bit ashamed of myself. So far in 2022, I've only bailed on four books. Can you believe that? Well, I also haven't been reading a lot of books so far in 2022. I finished and didn't much care for The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore. I gave it three stars. Uh, I just never ever got invested. The writing was fine. I think I would try another book by this author, but I didn't really care about anything I was reading, and it was a pretty awful story about witches, and it's based on historical fact, which I didn't find out until very near the end of it. That, uh, several of the characters, especially the witch finder, the witch finder general of, of England in the mid-17th century, he lived at Manning Tree, and he, yeah, so it's based on fact but it didn't ever really come alive as a work of literary fiction for me, so I don't recommend it. I am in a bit of a minority with this, although Lindy bailed. In retrospect, I, I should have bailed too, because it didn't ever grab me. And three stars is a negative rating, right? We can all agree on that. And I have also finished the Hilary Mantel memoir, Giving Up the Ghost, and I also gave it three stars. About half or more than half of it was like a two-star read. But what was good was five-star good, so I that came out to about a three-star. So I don't recommend it, other than that if you are interested in reading a really powerful piece of writing about women's health in the 1970s in the UK, and the, in a really angry, powerfully feminist way, Hilary Mantel was misdiagnosed for years and treated as a psychiatric patient rather than finding out what she actually suffered from physically, which was endometriosis. And when she finally got her way to writing about that experience, it was absolutely gobsmackingly powerful. And when she wrote about her unusual childhood, which I spoke of last week, and didn't get distracted by little 
psychological, psycho, psycho mythological symbols in, in her dreams. Her the writing about her childhood was interesting, but let me add one more comment. When she wrote about being a writer, that was also really incredible. But nothing ever really came together, and she got quite fixated after that stunning, lengthy chapter about her health struggles and the struggle she had getting male doctors in the UK to listen to her. After that just riveting, infuriating chapter, infuriating on her behalf, I mean she really communicated all that in just a potent, potent way. Then the last chapter was about all the houses and selling houses. She shouldn't write memoir unless it's about something that's really, really meaningful because she got waylaid with for far too much of this and uh, liked the sound of her own voice. I love the sound of Hilary Mantel's voice, but uh, I think that uh, it's her fiction that I will focus on from here on in. Let me say it one more time, though. Let me punctuate that rather negative review, the risk of repeating myself, that that one chapter I recommend very, very highly. Second last chapter. Um, was was really incredible. If you can borrow it from the library and read that one chapter, and some of the childhood stuff was pretty interesting too. But there was way too much about uh, little images and dreams and some weird thing that she thought she saw a ghost when she was a kid, and it didn't raise my hackles about ghosts in my reading. It just she melted it too much. There wasn't much there. There she really deep dove into a rabbit hole, if I can mix a bunch of metaphors, and I wasn't here for, for that, so. A mixed bag. So that's what I finished, and I started the two that I told you I would start, and I haven't made much progress because this week was rather busy, but I've started the Irish memoir, All Will Be Well, by John McGairn, and uh, it's incredible. I've read 30 pages, and it's just about his childhood in rural, is it County Leitrim, I believe, yep. Yeah. Um, with this really tyrannical father, and uh, is a much nicer mother and kind of like a farming type feel, like the, the countryside, and I really respond to that in my reading, and uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I, I already hate his father, and uh, I think he wants me to, and I already do. Looking forward to continuing. And similarly, a very favorable, but uh, even briefer, yeah, I've read 20 pages of this novel, Run Me to Earth by Paul Yoon, which is set in Laos during the American bombing that went on for years there in the 60s. It wasn't just the Americans, but they were the, the worst ones. During all the communist, anti-communist stuff going on there, three uh, village kids that, I think their own village has been obliterated already, and they're at loose ends and running scared, and they get hired for a field hospital in a former American retired American sea captain or something had a big old mansion that's already been bombed so part of the roof is missing but the, the, the whoever the people are they're running a field hospital for the wounded there and these kids are helping out and that's how the story opens and it is really gripping it's hard not to think of Ukraine as I read it gritty gripping and um, yeah beautiful writing so those are what I have started and I had hoped to finish one more novel, but it's a novel I'm very much enjoying. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I hope to have it finished by this time next week so that I would finish four and start two. But I didn't finish that one, so that'll have to wait for next week. But here is the book that I'm going to read to Kendra and Lindy next. And this is a book that I was confused about. It's the latest English translation of one of my very most favorite Japanese writers. So very fitting to finish off my last two weeks in Japan by reading this book. I think I will probably quite easily read it over two weeks. Woman Running in the Mountains by Yuko Tsushima, translated from the Japanese by Geraldine Harcourt, the much missed late Geraldine Harcourt. And when this came out, I thought it was short stories and I don't like Tsushima's short stories. I've read three of them in a little penguin blue book with three short stories. I did it as a buddy read with Joe and we were quite underwhelmed despite really loving uh, Tsushima's novellas. So when I found out this was a novel, not a collection of short stories, I got it immediately and that's what I'm gonna get a read. And this one starts with a, I think a pregnant teenager giving birth. 
So that is uh, also a timely, timely theme. That's what's going on. So I've got two more weeks in Japan. I don't know how much reading I'll get done. I'm hoping that, you know, I might get rather calming news from the tax department, but I am going to be busy running around to this tax office and that tax office next week to get it all paid up at the various jurisdictions. Otherwise, my classes are finishing up. Farewell parties coming out the wazoo and having a, having a good time. Kenji and I are getting along really great and I think we're both starting to get along even better because we realize time is running out before there's going to be a long break in our togetherness, which is not something we've ever experienced since we've been together to be separated for, for a few months. So um, we sometimes have very superficial arguments about which way we should do this thing that we have to do before we leave, but it never erupts into a full-scale argument before one or the other of us sees the wisdom of the other person's point of view, and that's it's good when that happens. So I hope that, like me, you have a good communication with your partner, with your other half, if you have another half, and that, unlike me, you don't have to do your taxes or pay your taxes or anything in a language you don't read, and that you've had a fabulous reading week. Thanks for watching.